Hey, what's up, everyone? It is CW here on PharmD TV. I'm very pleased to have with me Mari Shaw. He's a pharmacist, been practicing for eight years. And uh, it just so happens that Maurice is also an accomplished comedian uh, and, in fact, has performed his, his set in a number of locations around the country uh, and also has a very popular YouTube channel. We'll take a look at some of his content that he's got up there on the channel in just a moment. But Maurice, thanks for sitting in with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a, a pleasure to be on here today. Anytime I can uh, talk a little bit about comedy and pharmacy, I'm always game. Practicing as a pharmacist for eight years, comedian, talk about how that kind of came together because nowadays pharmacy and subjects from the pharmacy world are obviously a, a centerpiece of, of your act. Talk about how that came together. How do you wrap pharmacy and comedy together? Growing up, I was always a class clown. I um, always had A's and B's, but never could make honor roll because I always got a check mark for uh, misbehaving in class, always telling jokes and disrupting the class. So I've always been kind of uh, labeled as a comedian. Um, when I was in pharmacy school, actually, I used to imitate my professors. And I would make videos. And one time we had this assembly hall and I said, you know what, I think it'd be a great idea if I imitate the dean of our college of pharmacy. I was like, either this is going to go really well or I'm getting expelled out of pharmacy school. So I wore bright red lipstick. I had a wig on and a dress and I went up there and I imitated her and she came on stage. I'll never forget because she had this, she just had no expression on her face. I was like, oh my gosh, she's upset. I'm about to get kicked out. And she was like, oh my gosh, that was the, the best thing I've ever seen. The best uh, impression of me ever. You should be a comedian. So ever since then around pharmacy school, everybody said, man, you should be a comedian. You should be a comedian. So I said, you know what? I'll give it a try. So one day I did an open mic and I'm telling jokes and it's, it's a great atmosphere. Just a bunch of people who have the same ambition and goal in life, just kind of supporting each other. So I kept coming back just because I was making new friends and I eventually got invited to do a show. And one of the guys on the show saw me at the open mic and he saw me looking at my note cards. He said, hey, you going over your set? I'm like, no, actually, I got an exam tomorrow. I'm in pharmacy school. And he's like, well, why the hell aren't you talking about that on stage instead of being drunk? You know, he's like, every comic talks about being drunk. You should do something about pharmacy that's different and people would like it. So I said, you know, I'll give it a try. And at first, when I started trying to do pharmacy jokes, I realized that most people in the audience uh, didn't know anything about pharmacy. So I had to make the jokes in a certain way that even if you weren't in pharmacy, you could understand it. Mm -hmm. And once I really started to fine tune those jokes, I also wanted to, to have a message with it. You know, the more I got more involved with um, kind of like pharmacy reform in terms of working conditions. So in one of my jokes, for example, um, a lady comes to the counter, she wants to drop off a prescription. I'm like, ma'am, I can get this ready in 15 minutes. She's like, 15 minutes? Why it takes you 15 minutes to take some pills from a big bottle and stick it in a little bottle? So I get her prescription ready. I'm bringing her out. And she goes, I actually have a question. Will my new medications interact with my old medications? I'm like, ma'am, to be honest, I'm not really sure. I don't even know what that is. I just took some pills out of that big bottle and I stuck it in a little bottle. And so the audience always laughs at that. And then afterwards, you know, the anybody who works pharmacy comes up to me and goes, oh, I love that joke because... People in pharmacy hate when they're rushed, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to their medicine. And then people who love my set that have no understanding of pharmacy go, I'm going to be a lot nicer and more patient to my pharmacy staff because I, I realize it takes a lot longer. But I'm that patient you talked about, always wanting it in like five minutes. So, you know, it was nice to be able to relate to the audience that like, hey, give your pharmacy staff some time. You know, they're not just flipping burgers back there. They're dealing with medicine. So, you know, 15 minutes isn't that long to wait. And what, what happened was a lot of people would actually follow my YouTube channel and then they would see my other videos about, you know, retail pharmacy, the understaffing that goes on and kind of the, the pressures that were put on in retail pharmacy. And so a lot of people will comment on my videos that aren't in pharmacy and say, man, I didn't realize it was that bad. I'm going to be a lot more nicer and more patient. When I'm at the pharmacy. Who who could I talk to to make a difference? Because I really, you know, love my pharmacy staff and I don't want them to be working in these type of conditions. So, you know, it, it, it took a long time and some days I wanted to give up, but I'm glad I didn't. And I'm able to take people who know nothing about pharmacy and help them to get more interested in the struggles that we face in retail pharmacy. 
Well, you mentioned your channel on YouTube, RX Comedy. That gives us a, a good opportunity to take a look at one of your clips here. Can you set it up for us and then we'll take a quick watch? In my experience after my residency, I was a pharmacist in Chicago. And when I was in Chicago, I worked in some pretty rough areas uh, for many years. And then when I moved from Chicago, I worked in a, a rich, wealthy area. And it was just kind of funny, some of the differences when you go from a rich area to a poor area, just, just kind of the way the customers talk to you. So that kind of sets up the, the bit we have next. You know, working in rich stores, everything's different. Like the way the customers talk to you. But when you're in a rich area, it's how customers talk to you. Excuse me, are you a pharmacist? Yes. Uh, can you tell me what aisle the feminine products are? Yes, ma'am, the aisle eight, lower right hand side. Thank you, doctor. That's how I talk to you on the west side. Excuse me, Mr. Pharmacy Man. Can you tell me what aisle your coochie cream is? I said, well, if we actually have any coochie cream, it'll be in aisle eight. Thanks, nurse. Pharmacy man, I can't afford none of the Gucci creams. What do you recommend? I said, well, it depends. What's wrong with the Gucci? <laughs> she said, my Gucci be itching. I said, well, how much money do you have? She's like, two dollars? I said, scratch it. <laughs> I can always just imagine some of the things you see beyond uh, people talking to you like this, uh, different uh, ways people communicate with you when they're coming to the pharmacy. Same thing, I got to see the same sort of thing in the hospital, you know, when I used to, back in the day when I was working in ICU, some of the things that people would say is crazy, but uh, I can see why your, your, your page is getting some, uh, getting some likes. Well, well, thank you very much. And, um, you know, when I do longer sets, sometimes when, I, when I'm on stage, I'm on stage for 45 minutes. So I usually will talk about how when I first started, I, I worked at a pharmacy in Chinatown. And then there was a point where I worked in the area. I used to work overnights in the all Hispanic area. Sometimes I'm working by myself. So then I, I worked like on the west side of Chicago, on the south side, which is predominantly African-American. And then I started working in rich white areas. And what I've, I've, I've come to learn is that whether you're rich or poor, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, we, you know, we all suffer from the same medical conditions. We all go through the same trials and tribulations in life because when you become a pharmacist, people start to tell you about their personal lives. So you get to know more about them and it's really has nothing to, to do with your race, you know, especially in these times we are in the country where there's so much division. You know, I've really learned that we, you know, we're a lot more alike than a lot of people would like to give us credit for. Well, it's cool that you're able to talk about Things like that, you know, using comedy as a, as a way to break the ice and, and uh, get people to see some things maybe uh, that they weren't aware of before. You, you talked a little bit about in the opening how um, you, you were worried about back in the day when you were in school, what, you know, how are, how are my uh, teachers and, and uh, leadership from the school going to take my comedy about them and, and, and pharmacy and turned out they, they responded really well you know, going back to that, it looks like it went, uh, you know, well enough that uh, they're having you back. Talk about what uh, the opportunity is that you got offered uh, coming up here in May. Okay, yes, in, in May, I have the opportunity, well, I am going to be the keynote speaker um, for this year's graduating pharmacy class. Um, they want me to just kind of talk about having a passion outside of pharmacy and just merging it with pharmacy and how to make that work and just kind of inspiring people because I think a lot of times especially in retail we get pharmacy overload and people get stressed out because it's pharmacy 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 but when you have other outlets outside of pharmacy it doesn't get so stressful because you have other things to look forward to so it's kind of a message I want people to start thinking about early is just don't let pharmacy become your whole life you know have other things outside of that and have a perfect balance and hopefully that will help people um, you know, when they're first starting out, because, you, you know, when you first graduate, you're like, I'm gonna pay back my student loans, I'll pick up all the shifts. And you just, you know, people are working like 50, 60 hours a week, and they get burnt out because they just want to keep working and working. And I'm just 
you know, want to let people know, just have that perfect balance. If you're just working 32 hours a week, that might not be a bad thing if you have a passion in real estate or flipping furniture or whatever your other passions are. I'm really tickled that I got a chance to be introduced to you and, and get to know you a little bit. I'm I'm pleased that we'll be doing a regular set with you, having you jump jump on the show and and we'll be able to chat about some things, maybe have some laughs ourselves as we get going here. Uh, maybe on a monthly rhythm or, or however much it turns out to be. So looking forward to that. I appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit about your story today. And I can't wait to have you back. Oh, yes. Thanks for having me. And, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back, um, having uh, continuing this podcast and, and bringing up different issues that hopefully other people can find funny and relate to. Get out to YouTube. Check out Maurice's channel, Rx Comedy. We'll have a link to it in the show notes as well. Uh, comment, if you will, uh, let us know your feedback. We'd love to talk about things that are important to you or that you're interested in learning more about. And maybe we can even sprinkle them in here with, uh, with Dr. Shaw and we can uh, chop it up with some comedy to boot. So uh, we'll have some fun along the way. I look forward to kept having you back, Maurice. All right. Thank you. And I look forward to coming back as well. See you soon. See you.